Hey there guys, and Edwardberg here. Hope you've been doing well. Welcome to the fifth video of the MTC and A Routrace version 7 playlist, where we will be diving a bit more into Winbox itself. Now I've already covered kind of where you can download Winbox and given you a brief overview of what it is, but I want to show you why it's such a cool and awesome application or tool that we can use for management purposes. And I want to discuss the new Winbox version 4 that came out as well from Microtik, if you should use it or if you should wait a bit. So this video will just cover that a little bit as well. So let's dive into it. So Winbox is a very powerful tool or application that we can use to manage our marketing. So we can actually log on to them, view configuration, change configuration. But not only that, it has a lot of more wonderful use cases. You could connect to Microtix over their MAC addresses or layer two addresses. You can connect to remote Microtix over their MAC addresses. You can compile lists or groups of different marketings that you want to manage or connect to. It's such a wonderful tool. It even works like a mini WinACP almost, where within Winbox you could drag files from the marketing onto your desktop, or vice versa, you could drag files from your desktop onto the marketing because maybe there's some custom package that you want to install, or maybe you want to upgrade the firmware manually and you want to download it onto your machine and then bring it onto the marketing. You can do it that way. <laughs> and Winbox allows you to just have this full functionality of a lot of different cool things. Now, one big point that I want to stress is that quite recently, Marketic actually released Winbox version four. Now, Winbox version four is actually just Winbox. It still has the same core functionality. It's just a way of us managing our marketing. It still does pretty much everything the old version of Winbox does. But the nice thing about it is it is natively supported on other machines as well and other operating systems like Mac OS and Linux. So this just gives more users access to this wonderful application instead of having to use stuff like Wine to run Winbox because sometimes Wine can be a bit buggy. So this is really fantastic news for everybody. I'm going to go into the forum post quickly because you need to understand something with this new version. If Microtech doesn't get any feedback, and they're just going to think everything is fine and continue making things the way that it is. So this is why they did actually announce it on the forum first, because this gives them a way of getting people to test the software and seeing if there are any glaring type of issues. And here we can see Normus has, or not just Normus, but the whole marketing community has kind of been compiling what's been happening with the new version four issues that there are. And if you find any issues, I would highly recommend that you come onto the forum and you post about it if it doesn't if it's not already listed so the market can take note of it and potentially fix it in version 4 for everybody to enjoy so that that's one reason i can recommend using version 4 but if you can't use version 4 because you're using some older version of windows Microtech has also stated that they will keep support up for the old version of Winbox as well, so that you can still use that. It's, it's not just going to vanish. They're not just going to remove it off their website. You can still download version three. You can connect to it like before. So don't worry about anything like that. So I'm just going to go back onto this side. So let's just quickly go over some of the brief statuses or settings inside of Winbox itself. Now, if we compare the two versions, we can see it looks quite similar. You've got some connection fields where you can set what you want to connect to. You can fill in the login credentials, so a username and a password. And I've already got this neighbors tab open. But the cool thing is with Microtech, and I did mention this before, it does run something called the CDP, or not CDP, it runs the MNDP protocol, Microtech Network Discovery Protocol. So it can automatically pick up if there are any Microtechs connected on the network. Now here I can see I am learning the MAC address of my HAP AX3 and I can see its uptime has been six days. So that's very useful information, but I can actually use this information I get from the neighbors list by just copying either the MAC address by clicking on it and it will fill it into the connect to automatically or I connect on the IP address. So I can click on the connect to for the IP address and it will fill it in there. Now the nice thing is if I go to this manage tab this is actually a list where it will store any Microtix where you click on this add slash set button. So if I click on add slash set, it will actually add it to this list. Now I've already got the IP address added, but let me add the MAC address quickly. So let me click on add set. And now there's basically a quick connection field for me that I can use to connect to this Microtix super quickly. Now that's exceptionally useful. 
Now it is worth noting with Winbox, it does offer a few extra tools. You can go into something called the advanced mode, which just allows you to do stuff like set notes and groups for your microtics. You can also store sessions. Think of sessions as a memory of a specific microtech that you connect to, to remember what windows and stuff you might have had open on that microtech. And the cool thing about the advanced tab also is that we can set the ROM on agent. So we can say which ROM on server we're connecting to. Now, if you're not using ROM on, don't be too stressed out about it. You, you don't need to worry too much about the advanced mode, but it is worth noting that there is a legacy mode as well. Now, what does legacy mode do? If I click on it, it doesn't actually open up any settings or anything here. So legacy mode actually allows you to connect to microtics that might be running older versions of Routro S, older versions of code that's not so compatible with the newer versions of Winbox. It just allows you to get onto those microtics so you can still manage them and maintain them and not have any issues. So that's what legacy mode allows us to do. Now let's quickly just connect onto a microtic using Winbox to see what it looks like. Now the first time you log in, you'll be greeted by this gray canvas. And this might be a little off-putting for some people because it does look like very old Windows applications. I don't know if you know Windows, what was it, 3.8 or 3.2 or something, but it looked really simplistic but it's done so by design it's done so on purpose because it's actually super intuitive it's super easy to actually understand what's going on because this gray canvas this is just where you can place whatever you want or however you want to place your configuration objects which is inside of this menu in a way that makes sense to you so this is nice because it's actually very customizable to you as an individual whatever you feel comfortable with so i just briefly want to touch on some of the cool things inside of winbox one big thing is we can go inside of this dashboard and we can add some widgets to also get some very basic understanding of what's happening on the microtech. So I can do stuff like add the time and date. I can add the CPU utilization. I can add memory utilization and even uptime. And all of this information is actually super useful because now we can quickly see the first time we log on to the microtech, is there maybe some resource starvation issue if, if it's running out of memory or out of CPU. We can quickly see that or importantly where i'm from south africa there was a lot of like power outages and stuff so you could actually see if the uptime is maybe like 10 minutes then you know hey this microtech it suffered a power outage so that definitely means there was some problem with the power supply or maybe with the power provider or maybe with the ups so many different things that you can quickly figure out on the fly with these useful widgets now next to this dashboard we have our settings where we can set a few things we can either set that we want to view inline comments or not we can set to hide passwords which is enabled by default as it should or you can learn how to zoom in and out now this is useful for somebody like me that's actually supposed to be wearing glasses or it's also useful for these youtube videos that i make because now i can zoom in even with the keyboard i'm pressing control and plus and this just makes the objects a little bit bigger so we can see more properly what's happening inside of winbox as well so you can get a view that's more or less comfortable for you and then next to our settings we have our sessions tab now again sessions you can just think of this almost as a memory something that's stored on your computer that winbox then references so that any open windows you might have had open from before it would be stored in the session and if you open up the session again to this microtech it will just load up with all of the settings or the windows that you had before so to speak super useful now some of the other cool information we can see what our session id is in this instance i have connected to the mac address so it stores that session with this microtech's mac address we have something known as the safe mode button safe mode just allows us a means of configuring our device safely because maybe you're working with some sensitive configuration and you're scared you might get locked out of the marketing maybe this is your first time setting up vlans and you've heard if you toggle on that vlan filtering bridge thing that might knock you out of the marketing or lock you out then this is a great feature where you can just click on safe mode and then any configuration changes you make will only be applied after you click on the safe mode button again if you quit before actually pressing that safe mode button again, all of the changes you've made will be lost. So very important to note that, but it is a useful tool. And then we've got an undo and redo function. Now this is very, <laughs> very Windows-esque. Uh, I'm sure if you've worked on stuff like Excel, then you've probably undo and redo a lot of different things. Now on Winbox, I personally don't often use these functions, to be honest. 
but I can see the use for it because maybe you implement some change and things aren't working or aren't working the ways they're supposed to, then you can quickly undo that change. And if things still aren't working, then you can say, hey, okay, then the issue wasn't made by my change, then you can quickly redo it as well. So it's actually very useful, but it's not something that I personally use a lot. Now that we've got the basics out of the way, we can quickly look at the configuration menu. So this is all of the options on the left-hand side that we can actually access to configure our marketing. And you can see there are many different menus to go into. Now, each and every different option, we don't luckily have to cover inside of the MTCNA. However, I don't want you to be scared of all of the options available to you. Very rarely, everybody will access every part of the marketing to configure it. If you're just using the marketing in your house, then you're probably not going to configure stuff like MPLS and route the complex routing algorithms or the complex routing protocols. You're probably just going to be wanting to set up stuff like your general internet access, VLANs, maybe a VPN or two, just some basic things. But it's worth noting that all of the functionality is there out of the box. Now we can quickly just go into some of these options. If I go into this interfaces, it actually pops up this interface box inside of this gray canvas. And it's nice that we can drag and drop, drag this around and put it wherever we actually kind of feel like it needs to be. I can also just resize the window a little bit so that it looks more in line to what I expect whenever I'm working on a market tick. And let's say, hey, maybe besides the interfaces, let me just go to the interfaces themselves so you can actually see them. But it's nice that we can have this general quick view of what's happening inside of the market tick. Now, if I also want to maybe add stuff like maybe I want to add a WireGuard tunnel. I can also click on that on the menu and it brings up the WireGuard configuration menu. And now we can also go over WireGuard configuration. How cool is that? And I could make this in such a way or such a view that is useful to me that I don't need to struggle whenever I'm working inside of Winbox. And there's one important thing that I actually need to note with these configuration menu objects. If you see that there is this arrow going next to the object, it just means there, there are more sub menus inside of it. So if I click on IP, we can see there's actually stuff like we can configure an IP address, we can configure our DNS, like is it a server or what DNS server are we using? There's firewall rules. We can even see stuff like what neighbors are connected to this marketing. So there's a lot of cool and useful information inside of Winbox. We can also go into a new Winbox. And what that does is just open up another session of Winbox for us where we can now connect to another marketing if we wanted to, and then we can properly troubleshoot between our two devices. Now, this is the basics of Winbox itself. It's such a useful tool. Like I said earlier, we can even use this to drag and drop files into the marketing. So if I go into the file system quickly, let me just get a quick dummy file that I created somewhere. That's nice. So inside this dummy file, let me just drag it there to the far right. I could actually minimize my window a little bit and then let's just drag this file system up here and if i drag the file into winbox it actually just copies it across how cool is that there's the file so this is very useful because you could even upload stuff like custom scripts you make and it's just so nice i i really like winbox so much now this is the old version of winbox let's quickly talk about the new version of winbox now, when I started making this video, I could actually see that Microtech has released an update for Winbox, where they actually are addressing a couple of those issues that we saw on the list earlier. So if I click on this update Winbox button, this actually allows you to download the update automatically and get some new improved features and stuff with your Winbox. Now here I can see they've actually added undo, redo and save mode, which was missing quite recently from the new version of Winbox. They've added a few extra features and improved some icons and stuff. So let's install this new version of Winbox. See how quick that goes. It is worth noting as well that the new version of Winbox is a little bit bigger than the old version. It's, it's about, the old version runs like two meg-ish, where the new version, I think the size was like 50 meg. So that, that is just one, one small note. All right, so I've got the new version of Winbox open. So let's quickly connect to our Microtech. I'm going to also just find the neighbors so here we can select we can go to saved which is just basically like the managed group that list that i added with the old version of winbox or i can go into my neighbors and let's just quickly see if i can pick up my microtech there i see the mac address so i can just connect to it i've clicked on it it's filled in the mac address for me and then i can just fill in my login details quickly and connect 
and here we can see the new version of Winbox in all of its glory. Now, the first time you connect, you might actually not see it in this color. I think if you go to the far right, you can see there is this settings button at the far right. You can click on that and preferring on or depending on how you prefer to work, there is the normal mode, which is this whitish grayish color or there is the dark mode now. So if you're working at night and you don't want to strain your eyes as much, it is there. I can see they've added the safe mode here at the top. Um, I'm not sure why it does that. Oh, <laughs> how cool is that? So this is how you can see how operable it is with each other. Because if you think about it, the operating system itself is still running off the Linux kernel and it's still doing all of the same processes and stuff in the background. And here we can see that I actually enabled Winbox on my old version of Winbox or I enabled safe mode on the old version of Winbox and I couldn't enable it on the new version but obviously because safe mode is technically running so let me just turn off safe mode go back to the new version of Winbox click on safe mode now there we go so now we can see it's as easy as clicking there it will tell you if it's on or not which is quite nice and we've got our undo and redo buttons We've got our new Winbox button at the top now instead of as an option inside this configuration menu, which is actually quite nice for me. It makes a lot of sense. And it's worth noting to disconnect from your MicroTik, you need to click on this little icon that looks like, I'm not sure, it's like two magnets that's like being pulled apart from each other to me. So that's what it kind of looks like to me, but that makes sense. So that is just the disconnect button. But it's worth noting that this looks a lot cleaner. By default as well, I think that the widgets for the resources is enabled. So if we go into our settings, our resource panel is enabled by default. One cool thing that I do like about this new version of Winbox though, is that the zoom in and out, you can actually do with your scroll wheel now. So if you hold in your control and you do the scroll wheel, you can actually zoom in and out of Winbox, which is personally for me, I like that, that that's really nice. But you can see the configuration objects at its core is still exactly the same. We've got our interfaces, we've got WireGuard, we've got Zero Tier. I actually love how cool these icons look. They, they look really, really fancy. <laughs> um, but one cool addition that Marketic has added as well inside of the new version of Unbox, besides allowing our Mac OS and Linux brothers and sisters and such to connect, now we can also create stuff called workspaces. So workspaces, you can kind of think of the sessions, but there's multiple different workspaces that we can connect or configure. So let me create a new workspace quickly. And I could just call this generic troubleshooting. And I can hit OK. And I can just switch to this workspace. Now, it is worth noting you can edit stuff and all that means is this auto save button is anything that you add inside of the workspace will automatically just be saved. You can toggle that on or off. So I will keep auto save on or actually let's turn it off quickly. Let's, let's just showcase this. So let's keep auto save off and that, that crashed Winbox apparently. So again, <laughs> it is still in the beta build. So we will run into bugs like that potentially. Let me just try and reconnect quickly. So once I've reconnected, let's go into generic troubleshooting. Let's see if I can edit it now. Okay, so it did save the change. It just kicked Winbox off for some reason. But inside the workspace, we can now toggle which window we want to be inside. Since generic troubleshooting doesn't have anything in it yet, it's still just going to look like a blank canvas to us. So let's fill it up with some stuff. Maybe I want to have stuff like my terminal running inside of there so that I can quickly run a few pings and such and see if something is wrong inside of the MicroTik. Maybe I also want to have my torch tool running so I can go into my tools and do a quick torch and have this running somewhere. And maybe I want to have my interfaces up as well and we can also just put that in a little window somewhere like here and there we go this is now our just if we quickly want to have a look at the torch and the interface list and we want to have access to our terminal so we can do stuff like run things we have this nice view from this generic troubleshooting workspace and i can now just if i can click on save since i have the auto save disabled but by default if it is enabled any changes you again make to the workspace just get saved 
So let's just toggle back to none. Do you see this is just the lobby basically, nothing's happening here. But if I quickly just wanted to go to this other workspace where I want to do generic troubleshooting, click on it. All of our generic troubleshooting tools are there for us to access quickly. So this is actually super, super intuitive and nice. I hope you see how useful this is as an application. I do understand there might be a lot of people that do not want to use the new version of OneBox 4 yet because they feel like Microtik still needs to do a little bit of work. But again, I highly encourage us as a community, if you are able to join the discussion, download Winbox version 4, try and use it for your daily driver. If there is some case where it doesn't work properly for you at all, you can always just switch back to the old version of Winbox. But this is a nice way for us to just let Marketic know what's wrong, if there are any issues, and they can then fix it for us. So anyways, I'm going to end off the video here. Thanks again for watching and I hope you've learned a little bit more about Winbox and why it's such a cool and awesome tool. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.